Hi guys, I'm here with vlog 96 and it is a boiling hot day at the moment so um, I'm just <laughs> trying to keep, if you see things moving about it's because all the windows are open because I'm just trying to keep cool and I'm going to start talking about a topic that I haven't covered at all yet um, which is about acting so so this blog I've called um, into the acting world and I know I've talked about before about the modeling industry which was obviously how I actually started out um, as a photographic model and I kind of have moved away from that a little bit now um, th I mean there is so much this topic is massive so I'm probably gonna end up doing quite a few different blogs about it because when I'm talking about the acting industry and I was thinking like oh so what should I what do I want to actually like come across and discuss in my blogs about it um, and I was like, well, I would like to, first of all, obviously, because as you know, all these blogs are based on my experiences and what's happened so far in my life. So I'm going to tell you about how I started in the industry, why I love it, why I do it, what what my drive and my, you know, the, my fire and my belly for it is. Um, but I'm also going to talk about the dark sides of the industry, same as I had with the modelling um, and kind of the negativities and why it is such a difficult really difficult um, environment to achieve and why you have to literally have a brain made of steel to you know um, keep persevering with it and not allowing things to get you down really because as it's exactly the same for being a model only I think that for being a model everything's a lot more targeted on just what you look like whereas with acting it can feel very personal if someone doesn't like the way you act or the way you've done an audition or the way you've done something um, so yeah, so into the world of acting, so this is going to be part one of that and then I'm going to continue with it because like I said, there's so many things within it that I want to talk about and I don't really in my head right now like trying to figure out where to actually like backdate and start it. Um, and I probably would also just point out at this point, you know, I don't pretend to be um, a famous successful model or actress, you know, I've just been, from the age of 10 I was just a, a simple photographic model. And in terms of the acting industry, I haven't had a breakthrough role yet. And in fact, only recently did I actually um, do a contract with my first proper acting agency. So it's all really new to me still. Um, and I'm very much a not, you know, a pro at it. And I'm completely fine with saying that because these blogs are honest and truthful for, for, from what's going on and how things are doing. And I know that my blogs have been really focused on my health stuff. But I, you know, I don't just want to do that. I want to share with you my other aspects of my life and my goals and my career aspirations and that's why I did talk about the acting and the writing and the modelling. Um, now you know the modelling I really just did for confidence and because I'd been bullied at the time etc and then it turned out I was quite good at it but it was not something that I ever felt I would want to persevere into my future years. Um, whether it's writing and acting for me is fundamentally part of who I am and I'll always remember my sixth form tutor who used to say the way that you know what you are if, if there's something you really love and you're really good at is if someone was to slice through you what would they see written across your backbone you know your, your butt into your bone and I think that's a brilliant way of thinking about it for him it was nurse because that was on a health and social care course that I did um, and for me it would be writer and actress because although I have many passions and I'm lucky enough to be skilled in different areas um, although not at maths, ICT, terrible, awful, don't ask. Um, although I could have gone down lots of different avenues, is what I'm saying, academically and in different ways. I've just been told I would have been a great doctor, or a professor or a criminologist even, etc. Um, for me, I always felt like if I'd gone down that route, I would have ended up feeling lacking and frustrated because for me... I am creative and I've been born into a really creative family and with all the shit and trauma that's been going on in my life and as you know still is at the moment with my health and everything else for me if I didn't do something creative that you know I would have killed myself by now I would have been completely over and done it with the depression and everything and doing something creative is such a vital outlet like I literally cannot praise it enough above all therapies and counselling and all the other stuff that people tend to go for that for me it's writing and acting that is what is kind of, it sounds cheesy, but it's kind of like my salvation keeps me going. Um, but yes, yeah, so I suppose actually I've just kind of 
started it myself, haven't I? A good way to get into it, really, with, with it. So, um, so, yeah, I think I talked about briefly before how, obviously, the modelling for me kicked off when I was 10. So I was still at secondary school. And that, you know, I loved my drama lessons right from the start. I loved my drama teachers. I just loved every aspect of it. And I think it's interesting because I suppose it also depends on your personality and your predisposition. So actually, if you look at a lot of famous um, actors and stuff, a lot of them are particular star signs, which I know a lot of people don't believe in star signs. I really do. I bang on like my star sign. And I'm not going to lie, my star sign does like um, attention and being in the limelight, but my star sign also makes very good leaders and this and that. And I always think it's interesting reading up on those and actually seeing what traits you are and aren't like. Um... So from a very young age, you can see in the photo albums that I was a posy little little miss, or like a little doll always posing. Um, but then what was interesting is I think that a lot of p actors, I think it's really hard to say, and like I said, I'm no expert, I'm really new to this industry still. Um, and as I learn and, and hopefully, hopefully I get auditions and gigs, I tell you what happens and you'll kind of be there with me on the journey. But I feel like a lot of actors and a lot of people... Um, an awful lot of people, you know, the globe is saturated with people wanting to be famous. And I actually find it quite sad when someone says, well, why did you want to be an actor? And it's like, well, I wanted to be famous. And that, that for me is not a reason um, to want to be an actor. I find that really vain and, and flat. But when people ask me why, my answer is always the same, which is that it wasn't really like a conscious choice for me. It was the fact that acting and getting into the role of somebody else or something else or whatever it is that I'm um you know falling into into depicting um is an absolutely wonderful personal therapy for me because what it does is it removes me from my current situation and my life traumas and everything else and allows me to become someone else into a different story and a different world and I think that for a lot of you know I think that I don't really know. I know there are lots of different types of actors and they'll tell you different reasons why they wanted to be an actor. I think there is definitely quite a substantial pool of well-known actors who would say the same, that they'd had a rough start to life or this or that, and they felt that actually acting was when they were the happiest and that they're quite sad when they're not acting. Um, but I think what's interesting a lot is that you, you see with your own eyes, although again, I think media distorts a lot of stuff, but you can see with your own eyes that some actors behind the camera are really intelligent, really interesting people that are trying to use their, um, I suppose their power or their, the fact that they know that they have a lot of fans of people out there, which means that they have the ability to persuade and lead people about important things. I think as an actor, you have an important role outside of your role to help being an advocate for important things in life. And I get sad when I see, and I don't want to stereotype, but normally it's a lot of more like Hollywood style actors who underneath all of that actually just come across really vain and empty headed. They're brilliant in the roles, but then you see them as them and you're like, oh, they're really disappointing. Like they're not, they don't have the morals and the judgment that I thought they would have. Um, but like I said, this is, you know, this is very subjective what I'm talking about right now because this is all from my own experience. And like I said, very new to this, very, very new to this. So, yeah, so I then got into theatre when I was kind of starting out with the modelling stuff. And we, I was part, I've talked about this before, I was part of a brilliant, brilliant youth group called Bike Shed. Um, and it was like, you know, our own little group of misfits because a lot of us had been bullied and had issues and stuff. And we were all together. And when we came together and we acted, it was just like magic. And it was just like, it was one of the few things that kept me going when I was being bullied really badly at school. And I was, and it was really interesting for me because that's when I was realising that actually, I really loved acting, but actually I was quite good at it. And I was picking up skills. And, you know, we're talking really basic level here. But, you know, that was the standard. So now after school, I was like, you know what, I want to go further and keep doing drama studies. So I did sixth form, but then unfortunately, obviously, the swine flu hit, and I got really sick, and I almost died from it. And so that kind of changed completely my path, because if that hadn't have happened, I would have gone to uni to do a drama degree. But because of that, and lack of money, it ended up being that I didn't do that. So in the end, I went and did a kind of a, a shorter crash course, so that I could kind of gain the basic skills I needed, like how to audition, um, screen acting, stuff like that, because I needed that grounding. Because if you don't have that, that's really hard. I mean... Um, it, I am 
a believer in, you know, the more you can do to help your cause in something, the better. So obviously I would have preferred to have done the course. Um, but I also think, you know, you hear about actors who've done no training, nothing, and then just been picked up by an agent and been really successful. But what is becoming very, very apparent to me very, very quickly is that this industry is absolutely brutal. And I mean brutal in the sense of just how hard it is to get noticed. Um, and you can be the most talented actress in the world. You can be the prettiest, the funniest, the the best at learning lines. It doesn't matter. Um, it is. It just seems to me that it always seems to come down to just luck. And I haven't had much luck in life so far, so I do feel like everything's kind of stacked against me. So I am probably a more determined person than maybe other actors who haven't had the trauma that I've had, because I have to go that extra mile to, to push and to get to places. Um, but I also feel because I have that kind of um, uh, downside, less likelihood of getting seen, that I'm trying to push harder for it. A part of me, kind of the doom and gloom negative voice kind of says to me, yeah, but Safra, you could do all of this and have an amazing set of acting headshots, an amazing spotlight profile and this and that, and you might still never get noticed. And I try to ignore that, and I think a lot of actors, have you have to ignore it. Um, I am very resilient and I do keep going, but that voice does pop up and there's not a lot you can do about it, you can't just shun it away. Um, because it does often feel like, you know, why if I had no offers of auditions when I know that I've done everything I can to get a great profile, why this, why that? And it does end up really grinding you down in the sense that it makes you feel really personally victimised. Like, um, like there's something not right with you, there's something wrong with your acting or the way that you look or no one's interested in this or that. And that's not the case at all. Um, but even still, it does make you feel like that. So I think that a big part of being successful in the acting industry is actually learning how to control your mind and the, your thoughts and um, kind of trying to subdue those negative ones that keep coming up saying you're not good enough, no one's interested, um, there's a reason why you're not getting gigs and that. And you have to kind of, you, what you do as a human being is you cling on, you just cling on to that tiny little voice at the back of your head that says there's hope, you will get something you will get lucky, it just needs the right casting director or the right producer or the right person who will just scroll through, see your profile and think, oh, actually, she looks like bang on for the role that I want. Um, but then if you, but then on the other flip side, you stop and you think, well, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there desperate to be successful actors going all mile out to training and doing this and that to be noticed. And because we have now got such a high population on this planet and we are too saturated, it means that the level of competition now is ridiculous. And so I know some people some people do say, because I've heard them say, well, if you are really that talented, you will eventually be spotted. And that actually really annoys me, that comment, because I know that that's not the case, because I know actors substantially older than me who are absolutely brilliant, just, they just skilled beyond belief and they have been trying since my age for years and years and years and years worked their way through different ages had a couple of gigs but nothing breakthrough and you know now they're getting on in life they're still trying and they haven't succeeded and that's what worries me you know I don't want to waste my whole life trying and not getting anywhere but at the same time I feel like if I gave up I couldn't live with myself for that because I don't give up on things and that would kind of be breaking my dream so um, and you know, recently, because you would have been following my blogs, it has been a really few rough months and weeks, and the last week has just felt really frustrating and hopeless, you know, I mean, I've kind of hit the limit of literary agencies that I can apply for for my kids' books that I've written, and although I had interest and almost managed to get a deal with a few, I haven't been successful with that, so I've got to the end of the line with that, which means that for now I have to park those stories, put them aside and continue to work on my main novels and others because I believe it's my main, main novels which are probably going to allow me my publishing deal. But again, it's exactly the same mirror as the acting industry, whether it's modelling or the literary writing industry. It is brutal. Like anything creative is just brutal because so many people are good at it and so many people are trying it. 
and getting noticed you know you can't sit there with a matter plaque on your say saying please look at them please look at me um so yeah so that's kind of how my situation began with acting and i very quickly realized that it was actually really good for me to be able to separate my issues with another character and become somebody else and that's why i say that for me it kind of became almost like a form of something i really love to do because it would bring me alive and I think I mentioned it once before, there was this breakthrough moment for me when I was in our theatre group where we, we were doing a play and we had an audience there and there was this particular scene which was quite a heated scene where my character was arguing with a detective, I was being um, interrogated and I remember just the feeling in my belly getting so hyped up and I remember doing my lines but I remember doing them and not actually realising that I wasn't her. I had forgotten I was Safra. I was completely and utterly, totally absorbed in that character. And actually for that scene while I was on stage, I really got into it. I remember I even pushed a chair. I was really like, it was awesome. And it was the best acting I've ever done. And that moment was like the epiphany for me. This is what I want to do. Um, and that in line with the writing. So writing and acting for me is on the same level part. Um, I am a natural writer, as you know. I can't be anywhere without a pen and paper. If I couldn't write, that would be the worst torture you could do to me. So I can't tell you between acting and writing which is more important to me because I can't, because for me they're like fused, they're like one thing. Um, you know, if I was successful at one and not the other, would I be satisfied with that? I honestly can tell you because I've not yet had the luck to get that far with anything. At the moment it's just at the stage of kind of chipping away at it. And you know how I like to use analogies their metaphors for a lot of things um, and for me it feels very much like this industry is like standing up against a wall of steel and you've got this tiniest little hammer and what you have to do is just stand there chiseling at that wall forever um, and hope that at some point you chisel something out a jewel or something and, and that's like the equivalent of a gig um, and people say oh don't be ridiculous it's not that bad trust me um, until you're in it you don't it's just, you know, I before I went into it properly, I was kind of like, you know, yeah, I've heard things, I'm prepared for this, I know that it's going to be hard. But until you actually get an acting agent and you start trying to um, really, really apply for stuff and really, really try to push yourself out there, you suddenly look back and you realise, fucking hell, this is like Mission Impossible. This is really hard. It's like, do you know what it's like for me? trying to get a breakthrough in the acting world is like trying to do the Rubik's Cube <laughs> and you just like, you just keep doing it and you just hope that at some point you get some luck and it just suddenly fits. Um, so yeah, so I suppose that's kind of like a good intro part to it for me. Um, and then to kind of get you bang up to speed where I am now in terms of acting. So a number of years back while I was modeling, and I was like, you know what, this is really not what I want to be doing. I really want to be pushing back towards my acting more because I feel like I'm going off, off piste. Um, and so I went about trying to get a spotlight profile. Um, now, for those of you that don't know, spotlight is, you have to have spotlight account to be called a legitimate actor without one and i'm sorry because i know there are a lot of times people that aren't on it but without one you, you it's meaningless um you, you have you do hear occasionally with some people who went for open casting calls i don't have spotlight and they managed to land a lead role that is like one in a trillion billion luck um you just need a spotlight profile and until recently to get one was really really hard you had to fulfill a really strict list of requirements so you had to have a set list of acting credits and again credits for them it has to be professional credits uh, in dancing singing modeling or acting so um there was a number of years that i just couldn't get on it because i was not fulfilling all their requirements and then covid hit and they kind of softened the requirements a little bit and then thankfully finally my modeling gigs had actually helped me with something because they were professional modeling gigs their gigs therefore i could use them as my credits to get me in like my foot in the door so they accepted me and i remember that was a big i was pleased with that i was finally on spotlight and then you get a spotlight account and a number 
Um, so that was the next step for me, and I was kind of so at this point I was totally self represented, so I didn't have an acting agent. Um, I was already applying for work, had a few small bits, but nothing in particular. Um, and then a year ago now, I got my first acting agent, um, and that's kind of almost up to speed to where I am now. So so that was again really eye-opening for me so i was using getting advice from my other acting friends my a lot more senior acting friends who were giving me really great advice because the problem with this industry is that it's very easy to take a wrong turn and be taken in by um you know crooks really there are a lot of people pretending to be agents and people that try and get money out of you and all sorts of stuff and you have to be really smart and really careful and um you know i was applying to the ones that were the most well known I suppose I thought I fitted the bill for the most but what you've got to understand is as a 28 year old girl I am in the most saturated gap for female actors there are loads of young females like me you have to find like almost like a personal niche or like your own brand really to stand out and that's really hard without professional help you have to know yourself really well and really figure it out it's really really a challenge all of this um, so when my acting agent finally got interested in with me, I was really chuffed, but I was also quite cautious about it because I've had a lot, and you'll know if you're in the acting industry, you hear an awful lot of horror stories about acting agents and actors not getting on with their agents and agents taking advantage of them and all sorts and all sorts. And prior to getting with this acting agent, I'd had a phone call with another acting agent who was interested in me and she had scared me half to death because she was terrifying. She was like a dragon lady. She was like... I don't care if you, if your mum has had a heart attack or if you've broken your leg, you get to London for those auditions no matter what, blah, blah, blah. And after that conversation, I was like, right, we're not going to get on. There's no way that I'm able to do that. No, thank you. I said politely thinking, oh my God, that was really scary. And I remember I paused for a few weeks with a flying with agents thinking, oh my God, are they all going to be like that? Because that's not going to work for me. But then finally I found an agent. And this is why they talk about a lot, if you're an actor here, that you need to find the right agent that kind of fits with you which is really tricky because as a newbie most agents won't even look at you um, and so you can see that this is like a staggered issue because you need credits for agents to look at you but you can't get credits without agents to be able to apply for work that you don't have access to um, so it is a real real um, tricky situation really um, but yes yeah, so actually I was really pleasantly surprised we get on really quite well, um, which for me is an absolutely huge thing because although my acting agent is not one of the longest standing, most experienced acting agencies, um, because we get on so well, and even when I have an issue with something or we almost get into an argument, we always discuss it and resolve it. That is really rare to find between an actor and an acting agent. So that is why I'm sticking with her um, for now because, because I think that that would be really hard to find again, that kind of... Um, understanding and relationship with it and also really importantly she actually appreciated and understands about my health issues and understands that although I am really hard working and as you know I, you know I will if I have to turn up for work even if I'm unwell I will and no one's gonna know about it because I can just hide it away from everyone um but I do still need that the person there to understand as my acting agent that there may be times when I'm not able to go for something or that um, I have to go for a medical appointment so if I were needed to be filming for like two or three months it's going to be quite hard because I would have to you know like that sort of thing and I think that the acting industry is changing a bit now so there is a lot more I've re you know on the TV in the last few years there's a lot more diversity with disabled actors deaf actors um, actors who have illnesses and hidden disabilities so for me that was a real level of hope and promise because honestly before that I felt like well no one's going to touch me with a barge pole even though I look nice and I can act well because as soon as they find out because I'll have to tell them because I can't hide it from them as soon as they find out that I have chronic health problems they'll be like no way because we don't think you'll ever actually um, be well enough to go for auditions or whatnot and of course that's not the case at all in fact I would push harder than someone who is well for it because I have those extra problems um, but it does mean that I do need someone on board that gets me you know what i mean um and understands and isn't like the previous dragon lady who was like even if you break your leg i expect you to go to an audition you know what i mean that 
that to me is cr stir fry crazy. I know that that's how they're programmed to behave and be, but at the end of the day, actors are still humans and we still all have normal lives. We still all have families. We still all have partners. We still all have pets. A lot of us still have health problems. And most importantly, a lot of us still have day-to-day -day jobs to make money for rent, which you have to somehow kind of manage along with your dream of being an actor and doing those roles. So it's a really tricky balance. Um, and yeah, that's, that kind of takes you up to speed to where I am right now. Um, so I've been working really hard on doing new acting headshots, which you'll know if you've been following my Facebook page because you would have seen loads of new acting headshots and you're like, oh my god, why is she so vain? Um, and I'll talk about that in detail another one because what I thought I would actually do also is do a blog about, um, for people out there who would like to be an actor or are struggling, even though, as I say, I'm absolutely no, no expert, but I'm doing a really wonderful, interesting online acting seminar course at the moment with some leading casting directors and I'm learning some really interesting things so I would love to be able to share that with you um, so that if you're kind of stuck in a similar situation I was or you're having problems breaking through with certain things like getting the perfect acting headshot or being with an agent then that's what I'm going to do that about and I'm also going to talk about in other blogs about um, the problems that I can see in the industry and kind of stereotypes and discriminations and things like that because once again, when I talked about, about the modeling industry and I was saying about the issue still with weight and girls being pressured to be fit, be thin, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I feel like with the acting industry, it's similar in a way that although they're trying to come across as quite modern and, and changeable and they're employing disabled actors and this and that, um, it kind of feels like they do it very kind of uh shallowly and naively they do it just for the sake of image and media but underneath they really would rather stick to their more dare i say puritan kind of old-fashioned methods um but i think that that having said that i think that that's very dependent on the role and the production and the casting director because directors are very very different people and one might be very very old-fashioned and stuck in their ways and not willing to have alternative people um, and others might be like really wanting that so that's why the industry is just so hard to pin down and as a person who really you know I like I was great at exams the reason why I loved it is because someone could hand me a book and say right if you learn everything in that book perfectly you'll pass an exam no problem can do that but when something is um, t intangible when something is like yeah you can do everything you can do but it still might not be good enough or you still might not get noticed that's really unfair because it feels like it's completely out of your hands. So often you're just, actors just go for months and months left waiting, wondering when they're going to get their next self-tape inquiry. Um, so yes, you know, I can't sit here and boast to be um, a successful actress yet because I'm not. <laughs> um, I w I'd love to be. Maybe in the future I'll be sat here and I can tell you that. Or maybe I won't be fortunate enough in the future I might say actually I've given up or just gone into writing or something else. Because like I said, you know, it is not a case of if you are brilliant you will be found. Because the world is so full of many brilliant people that not everyone can get a place in it. And there is that is why there is nothing more competitive than it. You know, people will literally tear each other to pieces for roles. Um, so, yeah, so I think I'm going to stop there as the, that, consider that like the intro blog for, um, Into the World of Acting, and I am going to continue with the next one very, very shortly. <laughs>